Okay, I wanted to do this um, word problem for you guys. Um, a vertical pole, 29 feet tall, stands on a hillside that makes a 29, uh, oh, sorry, an angle of 13 degrees with the horizontal. Determine the approximate length of the cable that would be needed to reach from the top of the pole to 78 feet downhill from the base of the pole. Round your answer. Okay, so first you have to draw a picture. Of course, I'm not drawing good at drawing pictures, especially on the computer. So I just kind of like inserted these like uh, triangles in here. And so here's my hill um, right here. This is my hill. And so that makes this 13 degrees all the way in here. Right? And so that's 13 degrees because it says the hillside makes an angle um, of 13 degrees with the horizontal. And horizontal means across, right? And then um, determine the approximate length of the cable that would be needed. So here's my cable from here to here. And you guys have seen these before, like on like um, telephone poles or whatever. They have these kind of like guy wires here so that the pole doesn't just boop, fall over. So this is my guy wire here. And I want to know this value here. I want to find out how long this is. So I'm going to label him X. Um, um, 78 feet down hit downhill from the base of the pole. So if here's the pole, we're going downhill this way. It'd be very different if the guy where was going up the hill. They gave me directions, downhill, downhill it is. So this length here is going to be my 78 feet. Okay, and round your answer. So um, I can see a couple of things and I kind of want to just make sure. Um, my pole is 29 feet, 29 feet. And um, now I just need to find this triangle. So um, hopefully you're looking for triangles. It'd be great if I can draw a right triangle in there, which I have one. I have a right triangle right there. And so now I want to kind of just figure out how to um, get some information on this triangle here. Because see, this is the length that I need. <clears throat> so let's just say, okay, let's just start with this right triangle because that's my favorite. I always look for right triangles. So if this is 13 degrees, what else do I know? Well, hopefully you said that this is 77 degrees. 77 degrees. And um, I don't know if that's too helpful, but um, let's just move my 13. Okay, so if that's 77 degrees, okay, that's what I need to know. If that's 77 degrees, right? That means that this right here is also 77 degrees, this portion right here. So the reason why this angle is also 77 degrees, right, is because if you look, these two lines are parallel. And the reason why is because they're both vertical. And um, from geometry, we learn that if we have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, there's my transversal, my hillside is actually my transversal, then these angles are called alternate interior angles. So alternate means like um, like your turn, my turn, so opposite sides of the um, transversal. Interior means they're on the inside of these parallel lines here and here. See how it's on the inside of those parallel lines? And they're angles. So this angle here is congruent to this angle here, so alternate interior. Okay. So there goes 77 degrees, which kind of helps me. And if you look at 77 degrees, if you know 77 degrees is here, then you should know how much this is here. And how would you know that? Well, because these two are called supplementary or a linear pair. Supplementary basically means they add up to 180. So if part of it is 77, how much is the rest of it? And hopefully you said 108. 100 eight degrees and I'm writing all on top of this because it's a small little picture so I want to pull this picture out because I I like my picture bigger so I've got this kind of picture here where this guy is a hundred eight degrees right this is the 78 feet down the hill and here's my pole with 29 feet and this is what I want to find my X okay so um, the first, my first mode of attack is I can't use right triangle like trig stuff because um, I don't, this is not a right triangle. So my second um, form of attack is my law of signs. Looks like this, right? right? And so this is like A over sine A, B over sine B, and C over sine B. OC, sorry. And um, little a means the side. Big A means the angle opposite of that side. 
And if you look, if I was to fill this in, I don't know A. I'm going to pretend that's A. I don't know A, but I know the angle. I know B, but I don't know his angle. And I know um, C, but I don't know his angle. So right now, the law of sines is kind of useless to me. So now I'm like grudgingly going towards the law of cosines, which is um, A squared equals to B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine A. Now, if you don't know why I'm grudgingly going towards the law of cosines is because look at this crazy equation versus this like nice, cute, little, simple, easy one. So lots of math to do here, So, but not too horrible because it's all just plugging in. So I'm going to pretend that x is my a, so I'm going to like think about him as my a. So a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared. That's just the other two sides. So when you kind of notice, recognize this guy looks like the Pythagorean theorem, except for he has all this stuff, right? So we got 29 squared, and it doesn't matter who b is because we don't know either one. 78 squared um, minus 2 times 29 times 78. Oops, 78, and that's cosine of 108 degrees. So this is basically a problem that you would plug into your calculator, and then it would just come out. And so um, I plugged it all into my calculator, and I just had like uh, just like a scientific calculator. So I got that A is approximately like 91 degrees. That doesn't look like 91 degrees, but 91 degrees, like 91.2. I'm not saying degrees, am I? Ooh, I'm saying degrees. Let me erase. So it's not 92 degrees. It's 92 feet because it's a length. So A is approximately 92 feet. Okay. So there, I'm done. This is nine, approximately, oops, approximately 92 feet. Which kind of makes sense to me because um, if... 108 degrees is the biggest angle, then he deserves the biggest side across from him. And notice how 92 is definitely bigger than 78 and 29. Um, how would I check my answer? I would go through now and find um, angle B and angle C using the law of sines. Now because I have A, I know A and I know sine of A, and now I can use this proportion here. I always kind of try to go back to the law of sines as much as possible. And then just making sure that the angles of this triangle add up to 180. And so there you have it. That's, um, th I think the toughest part about this problem is like drawing the picture. My pole with the hill, where does the 13 degrees go? It goes with the horizontal. And um, where does the 78 feet go? It's on the, it's on the hill. See, it says a point 78 feet downhill. Right, and I just wanted to know the length of that guide wire. So there you have it. It's um, this problem. I would suggest doing this problem again um, and drawing your own picture and making you sh you know why everything goes where it goes. And and notice this geometry um, alternate interior angle theorem that we used. And so um, hopefully this makes sense. And if not, make a comment so I can help you figure it out.